there are hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs um, launching businesses every year in the United States. Now, interestingly, that has actually been a little bit in decline, but entrepreneurs, the entrepreneurial spirit is really a significant driver. About 12.3% of the adult population of the United States is actively involved in trying to start some sort of new business. Now, the, um, around the globe, um, the, the types of activities that, um, you know, the, how you define entrepreneurship and the percentage of people that are involved in, in entrepreneurship is, is somewhat dependent upon the type of economies that exist. Um, there are factor-driven economies, efficiency-driven economies, and innovation-driven economies. The fastest, um, some of the fastest growing economies, like I'm gonna just point right here to this really, this really tall one right here, China. Um, of course, we hear a lot about China these days. Um, over here, uh, if you see my cursor, that's Ecuador. Now, Ecuador has about 30%, a little over 30, maybe 33%, of the adult population is involved in an entrepreneurial activity, but Ecuador is a little tiny economy. China, of course, is a much more significant economy. And in China, you have about 13% um, of the, um, yeah, in China, you have about 13%, I'm trying to get the right number here, of the population involved in an um, in, in uh, entrepreneurial activity. The United States over here, it actually, what was that, 13%? Now China, actually it's a little over 10%, probably about 11%. The United States is in the 13 and a half, 14% range. Um, you know, but what this kind of just um, indicates is, um, you know, where we stack up in terms of the rest of the globe, in terms of entrepreneurial um, activity, okay? There is this thing called the GEDI, the Global Economic Entrepreneurship Development Index, which every five or 10 years, they come out with a new one. The last time they had one, the United States was about fourth from the top um, in terms of the GEDI score. Um, we're, we're never in the bottom 10, we're always in the top 10, or at least almost always in the top 10. Um, as far as I know, we've always been in the top 10, but. Uh, currently, we're at the top of the list, but that changes over time. About 10 years ago, um, we were about fourth down the list. Now we're at the top of the list in terms of entrepreneurial friendly. But, you know, here's an interesting thing about entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial activity in the United States. We, we have this tendency to think of ourselves as, um, you know, the sort of the hotbed of innovation. And the, the reality is, is there's significant differences within the United States and, and outside the United States in different markets um, in terms of how easy it is for entrepreneurs to get going. It's not a level playing field even inside the United States. About 10 years ago, uh, 60 Minutes did a, um, a piece where they sent a couple of different um, production teams um, out into two different cities. One was Tokyo and one was New York City. And they gave them the same mandate to um, open a bagel cart, you know, start a bagel cart business. They wanted to see really just in a real situation how easy or difficult is it to start a bagel cart in New York City versus Tokyo. So the team in uh, New York City uh, went down and they went through the process of filling out the paperwork, applying for the permits, paying the monies, waiting for the inspections. It took them two weeks to get permission to put a bagel cart out on the sidewalk in New York City. In Tokyo, it took them 48 hours. Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is regulation and um, that sort of thing that, that exists in some cities. Now, um, there are cities and there are states in the United States that are not very business friendly. We happen to live in a state that is incredibly business friendly, Texas. I don't know how long it would take to get a bagel cart on the street of um, Dallas, if they even allow such a things, but 
Um, but I can tell you that here in the state of Texas, it is really very easy to get a business going. Literally in about 24 hours for $325, you can file an LLC or a corporate um, formation document. And you'll have a, a set of documents that allow you to start a business. And unless you need a license uh, because you're an electrician or a realtor or something like that, if you're in an unlicensed industry or business, you can open your doors as fast as you can get your money together and as fast as you can um, go out and um, you know rent a space and buy some equipment and get your inventory or whatever it is that you need to do. Um, to highlight one of the differences, I, I like to think about and I share the story of Back when FlashNet was going in oh, about 1997 or thereabouts, um, I was in the process of rolling out certain marketing um, programs nationwide. And in one of the um, efforts, I went to the city of Chicago. And while I was in, and I took a team of, I think, either two or three people with me. And we flew in for a weekend because there was a convention at the big uh, Chicago Convention Center downtown. Now we flew in with, um, you know, uh, some bags for overnight and some boxes. We stopped by the hotel, dropped off our bags, checked in, and then we took the boxes in a cab, uh, cardboard boxes. We took them to the convention center and we had the cabbie drop us off um, on the, the curb out in front of the convention center. There was about 100 feet of concrete in the convention center doors and they were glass and then the lobby was about 50 or 75 feet deep. And then you had some more doors in the inside of the convention center where they were setting up for this big exhibition. And it was a bunch of booths. And so uh, my team got out of the cab. We got the boxes out of the trunk. We walked up to the door and there was this big beefy guy standing there with his arms crossed. Didn't look real friendly. And we walked up to the door and, and, um, said something like, yeah, is this how we get into the, you know, to take our stuff to, a, we got a booth right there. And the guy goes, can't do it. I said, what's the matter? The doors, they look like they're open. And he said, you can't take those boxes in. And we said, why not? <laughs> and he said, well, the only people that can take boxes in are Teamsters. And we said, well, they're not heavy. And we're just, you know, we're only carrying them. Like I can see my booth. See right there, turn around and look. He wouldn't turn. I said, I see my booth right there. I just got to walk up there. He said, you can't do it. I said, what are we going to do? He said, we well, got to take them around to the back to the uh, loading dock and drop them off, and a teamster will take them to your, to your booth for you. So we had to walk all the way around this huge building, drop them off at a loading dock, and an hour later, they show up at our booth where we could have been like in three minutes. Now, that's a little tiny thing, but it's an exemplary or, you know, thing when it comes to the difficulty or differences in doing business in some areas. Can you imagine how complicated the processes must be in somewhere like Chicago or New York City? The bureaucracy that exists where all the permits and, the, uh, you know, the, it's just, it's really very difficult. I'll give you another example. In, in California, one of the main reasons that California has such a high uh, cost of, of um, uh, residential property and land uh, is because of the environmental laws out there. I don't care what piece of dirt you're wanting to, to prepare to build a building on. Um, unless a, a developer has already plotted it out and gotten permission to build homes on a big parcel of land, now that individual lot has already been prepared, so you can go build a home on that lot. But if you wanna take a, a piece of dirt and you wanna, you wanna buy that piece of dirt and you wanna get it zoned and you wanna put a piece of, you know, some sort of a building on it, it takes typically two to four years to get all the environmental permits passed. The fact that it's so difficult to get environmental permits passed in California it increases the cost of the land, which increases the cost of the building, which increases the cost of the finished product. All of those things slow down development and cause uh, prices to go up. And, and um, that is one of the reasons that you have um, sort of the economic fiasco that you have in large parts of California 
and other parts of the United States. And one of the reasons why you see so much business moving to Texas. The fact that Texas makes it easy for businesses to get started attracts business to Texas. The fact that Texas makes it easy for things like land to be developed and businesses to get started keeps the cost of land and the cost of, of products and services in Texas lower than it does in other parts of the United States, which is contributory to the rampant exodus of businesses out of California, Illinois, New York, and other states. And it really boils down to, on a global basis and within the United States, capital and people will be drawn or attracted to areas where it is easy for them to take advantage of the opportunities that exist. If, it's, if there's an opportunity uh, that's identified, remember the entrepreneur identifies an opportunity, if there's an opportunity that's identified but the cost and the, uh, uh, of get, taking advantage of that is so high that the risk is elevated to the point where it can't be re reasonably justified, then people won't, won't do things. So that's why you see so much traffic coming to uh, Texas. And the same thing happens globally, not just inside the United States. So the degree of, of friendliness that exists inside the United States relative to other nations uh, also exists inside the United States from one region or locality to another.